So vast majority come from Samoa and Tonga. Um, and a lot of them come through New Zealand to Australia because it's easier to get a visa and stuff to, to New Zealand. And a lot of them are born in, born in Australia and their parents have come over. So there are a lot of, a lot of pockets where, where most of um, the area is Polynesian. Um, but they do, you know, integrate into society really well. There's even so much as Tongan wards and Samoan wards in, in, uh, in Australia. And so my first area, actually, the year before, they just dissolved both the language programs there. And so it was, it was kind of a unique, that was a unique experience watching members transition between being in their individual language program to an English language program. And it shook some people's testimonies because they were they didn't know English very well, so that was kind of a opportunity to work with people and reactivate them a little bit for work. They do just what Australians do. Um, food they they have their uh, their food that they fried fried chicken is probably number one on the list for a lot of especially in my first area uh, when I was going out there. My mission president said that. The alphabet wasn't ABC, it was ABKFC. So KFC was a daily daily meal. Other than that, they have a lot of, they have, eat a lot of taro, chop suey, and pork, and just heavy, heavy, really heavy foods. And they feed you a lot. That's not some myth that you hear about. They feed you a lot, and you gain a lot of weight no matter what. <laughs> um, but they're the most generous people I think I came across on my mission. Um, they were always willing to help the elders or sisters out, and they were just, yeah, just good down-to-earth people. I remember once, this is towards the ending of my mission, but I was sit sitting at a Samoan companion, and we were with a family that, um, well, the grandparents didn't speak in English, and we offered, we were in we we went over the, there are next door neighbors so we would go if we didn't have dinner or whatever we would usually pop over there and they'd feed us but we would always ask them what we could do to help them and one time the elderly grandma just kind of talked for like three or four minutes straight i didn't have much idea of what she was saying so my companion had to tell me after but she kind of just chastised us for not allowing them to serve us more and for kind of just asking too often what we could do for them versus allowing them to serve us. And so that was kind of a unique perspective to get at the ending of my mission was that they, I think that's one of the cultures that I saw most, just wanted to, wanted to serve and wanted to uh, help the missionaries spread the gospel. So they're, they're in most major cities in um, Brisbane, city, Sydney, and Melbourne. A lot of them are more working class, you know, they, they get out there and they, they really put their shoulder to the wheel, and um, and that's that's a generalization. I mean, I met a lot of um, business, very business savvy Polynesians throughout my mission, but a lot of them were very, um, you know, forklift drivers or or construction workers, and I think it kind of gave them more of a sense of accomplishment than the business world did, just because of their that's what their culture was, very working with your hands and. You know, that kind of thing. So just in general about the culture of Australia is I was very surprised about how many different types of cultures there were in every apartment I was in. There, you could find a Book of Mormon in almost any language. Um, you had, um, especially in some areas, you had a lot of Polynesian languages. You had Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Thai. You had just almost every um, South Pacific and... Asian language there was just in Book of Mormons sitting in your apartment that you got to hand that you would usually have an opportunity to hand out and so that that really surprised me is just how many how diverse and how much of a melting pot um, Australia is.